Folks, I'm blessed to know many of you are out there learning to quilt with me. Some of you are just refreshing your quilting skills, and even better, many of you are just being entertained by the wonderful videos we put out here at Stitch in Heaven. Well, I've got a really quick skill builder that will help us all increase our accuracy in our patchwork, whether we're really trying to or not. So are you ready? Let's discuss nesting our seams. <music> Well, well, welcome back everybody. My name is Rob Appel. Welcome to So Well, presented by Stitch in Heaven in Quitman, Texas. We are so blessed to have you out there. And yes, I am not the most accurate quilt maker. As a matter of fact, if you've been following along with our fun out there, we now have a team, Tiffany, Tiffany Hayes, our more accurate quilt maker, and myself, Mr. Rob Appel, who's less than accurate, but having fun getting it done. Oh, I like the way that sounds. But anyways, folks, we are building quilts, we are working through cutting, we are working through sewing. Many of you are new out there, and this is something that we can all be paying attention to, whether we're really shooting for accuracy or not. Because the truth of the matter is, is if you look at a quilt like this one here behind me, with so many pieces of patchwork, all of them being the same half square triangles of just different sizes, I guarantee there are probably more points missing than there are accurately coming perfectly to Together. However, at a distance the quilt reads beautifully, you can't tell that kind of thing. But like I was starting to say, if we're going to take the time to be sewing and cutting and pressing these fabrics together, we may as well work towards a little bit more accuracy. So I want to take a real uh, quick video, if I may, see, we'll see if we can get through this in less than 10 minutes today, um, and talk about just nesting our seams. I say it in almost every video, but what does that really mean? Well, that means that we're going to build our patchwork from the start if we know, so that as we continue to assemble our units together, whether it's straight or triangle piecing, we can shoot for accuracy at the unions, right? So let's just go ahead and start here with the very basic of four patch. Um, I've cut my squares. It doesn't matter what size they are as long as they are exactly the same size. And I even cut these in a stack. So now I'm just going to go ahead and lay these together right now. And I'm, I'm happen to be using some batik fabrics, folks. So I guess you could consider this pre-washed. And um, as I come over to my machine, I'm also going to now put on the seam allowance. Some of them are magnetic. Some of them uh, bolt onto your machine. Some of them are on your foot um, as an edge guide. But if you can do something like this that will improve the consistency of your sewing uh, so that every seam that you're doing is the same, that will also really help with this, okay? So for accuracy, yes, having a same consistent quarter inch seam allowance absolutely helps. Um, having a nice pace with our machine sewing will absolutely help. So I'm just gonna sew these with all of you right now as we're working on this together. I am gonna go ahead and chain piece these. So I'm just gonna grab my next unit for our new quilters out there and I'm just gonna slip them in under the foot. Make sure that little corner doesn't get caught as we are getting started. And we're just gonna sew through the second one as well. Okay, so the first trick to nesting, nesting our seams is learning where we're going to press. And many of us quilt instructors tell you, press to the dark side, press to the dark side. And it's really for two great reasons. The second one is this exact, the nesting of our seams. But the first reason is uh, color bleed through. If the seams overlap, sometimes the darker fabric will show through, which we don't really want. But in this case, we're building a checkerboard. So we're just gonna make sure we're pressing to the dark. And so I hold up my dark fabric and then I just set my iron on top so I'm not tweaking, torquing the seam at all if possible. It can sit there for a few moments on my nice wool pressing mat here. And the same, I'm just kind of folding over that seam allowance, kind of setting the threads. And this is what we're really looking for here in part two, folks, of that nesting of our seams, okay? So we have, oh, it's not the prettiest fold over. Let's, let's do that from the backside as well. It is quilting. We should give you a, a real example of what happens, I guess, here. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Okay. And because we're building a checkerboard, right, one of these is going to rotate. And that way, those little seams right there, they're going to do this flippy floppy against each other when we take these and we lay them right sides together. 
Okay, hopefully you can see that. So now as I go to secure, the first thing I'm most interested in is pinching those four corners of fabric together nice. And then I'll come out here while still holding with one hand. I will come out here to the edge and then I'll line up that outside edge, holding, line up the outside edge. And then as we travel into our sewing machine, we just need to watch for one thing here. And as we're coming, this is not necessarily predictable. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But as we get in here in a second, you're gonna see now my seam allowance is traveling and that means one is heading towards me and the other one's underneath and it could get folded. Right now it's getting folded into the wrong direction. So I wanna make sure that I'm gonna keep my finger on top of that as I come through. That gives me a nice, crisp, accurate, crissy crossy of my thread, my uh, fabrics there and my threads technically. Now, earlier I mentioned my friend, Team Tiffany Hayes. She would have pressed those seams open. That's a lot more work and probably a bit more accurate. But in the long run, this meets my level of efficiency and accuracy. And I think many of you will just find this works. Not trying to talk anyone out of accuracy, uh, super accuracy, but I will point out right now, even before we press this, that is a real nice, crisp four patch something I'd be proud of in either my quilting class, my 4-H, my county fair, whatever we're doing with our quilts, giving it away. People won't judge them that much anyways. Oh, I'm, I'm running out of time on the clock here as I'm chit-chatting away. So then again, I can always rotate these because we've always pressed to the dark. Those seams here should also nest and magic voila, that works perfect, okay? So that is the first trick. Let me give you um, how it also works when we're dealing with diagonals, when we're dealing with triagonal, triagonals, triangles, something like that. Okay, so the first thing again is, is working towards a little bit more uh, common sense of accuracy. So I am actually have a sharpened chalk pencil and I'm just gonna use a nice straight edge here. This happens to be my clearly perfect slotted trimmer, which I'll also use in a moment. Folks, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've pulled this ruler back slightly from those two corners because the chalk is as wide as that corner. So now as I drag my chalk through here, and this is gonna be a guideline for sewing, you can hopefully see it goes corner to corner. So sometimes we'll lay our rulers right on the corner and then our markers a little off. So the first step to something like this is getting a good accurate marking after accurate cutting. I do need to move my seam guide out of the way so that I can use just the edge of the foot right on that chalk line. Nice medium pace with my machine. And I'm actually gonna cheat it like I was chain stitching, which means I'm just leaving my needle down. I'm rotating my fabric back around here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew on this side. Okay, so our next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna cut this using our rotary cutter and we're cutting back on that chalk line. That's why we could cheat a little bit. So maybe a scant quarter inch we were doing there. Okay, so now we have two of these half square triangles. And at this point, again, it's the right tool for the job if you're really, really going for accuracy. So if I'm using the slotted trimmer, I'm gonna cut before I press. If I'm using a block lock, then I'm going to press and then I'm going to cut. So I'm going for three and a half, so I can show you that both. Um, I've done other videos with both these tools, but this is a fun little review. So I'm just gonna drop my dotted line of the slotted trimmer onto the threads. I am going to cut and cut. And if I'm doing more than one or two of these, I'll generally whip out that good old Martelli rotating mat. And then let's go ahead and get those corners this is the cool thing about this is it will take off those dog ears for you in advance, right? Oop, got a little carried away there. And like I said, if I'm doing a block lock, then I'm gonna hold again the dark fabric up. I'm gonna press over. Make sure I don't cut any of the work we're working towards. Okay, and now the block lock has a groove and we're gonna find that groove into our seam allowance, voila. And what I like to do at first is I'm just gonna do a real easy shave and trim. Okay. 
And then as I rotate this around, I can find that happened to be a three and a half inch I made earlier. I'm locking in the corners and the seam in the groove of the block lock cutting template. Okay. So there's that one. And then I do still need to press open the one from the slotted trimmer. Well, I'm out of time, but I'm not out of video, so let's just keep going. Um, you can see those are blah, 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 exactly the same, even though I use different tools. So um, again, it's the accuracy we are going for. Uh, let's make this one again so we can bring them back together. So I'm just gonna double check my layouts. Okay, I'm good. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna flip these over for my seam. And again, you can hopefully see the same trick as we had going with our straight lines is I have four folds of fabric heading in opposite directions, making themselves a crisscross. I've got a great pinch with my finger as I head over to the sewing machine. And again, folks, if I was gonna do more than just one of these right now, I would take the time to swing that seam allowance guide back around. But for one of these, I think we can trust I'll get it okay. Because there's one last little trick I'd like to share with you right here before we sign off today and that's how to get these to come together. So when I pressed the first one, I held what was the darker of the triangles at the seam up, so I was pressing towards the dark side again. Again, my friend Tiffany would now start pressing seams open for sure, but either way, what I wanna point out is as I bring these together, right now, the seam here is pointing this way, the seam here is pointing that way, and as a matter of fact, folks, I wanna point out a lot of patterns now will show you which direction to press in for this exact reason as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fold these over right sides together and we're gonna to try to make sure those points line up. A lot of folks will do that with a straight pin. If that seam allowance was the same, nice and accurate, we should be able to do it with our eyeball, but now I'm gonna flip it over because I'm really looking for that point right there. I wanna find that point as I stitch through it in case I have to cheat a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to rock and roll, making sure everything's nested just perfect-ish because that's all that really matters. Close enough, again, look at the quilt behind me, please. Okay, here we go on our quarter inch seam allowance marker. And this is again, that extra bonus tip. As I come through here, if I can put that needle right in those crosshairs right there, it should really help on the front side of the block unit, give us the optical illusion of those triangles coming together awesomely. How did we do? Whoo! Let's press that to prove it and call it a tutorial today, folks. Okay, there it is. My method will bring a bit of bulk in the back and maybe we'll do another video one day about how to tend to all of that. But what we were talking about today is nesting our seams for accuracy so that we get some pretty awesome points in our patchwork if that's what we're going for. And if it's not what you're interested in now, folks, let this seed sit in the back of your head while you're building these big, wonderful quilts like this that have a lot of the same units. And when you hear pressed to the dark side or when you see those arrows in your patterns, just understand where we're trying to take you in the quilting community, especially if you're one of our newest family members. Again, it is such a blessing to have you with us. And until I see you with another awesome tool tip or tutorial, Please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.